Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide. And we're on September 26th, 2023. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet. And welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update, as well as earthquakes and a look at volcanic weather and space weather. Checking out here the last 48 hours on our sun, as it has been pretty busy over the past six days. But the last two days, not so much, only seeing some minor C-class solar flares. But we did it. see a pretty flashy M-class solar flare outgoing position and giving us glancing blow. Looking at the last 48 hours incoming, this is crusting imagery that will be coming for an Earth-facing view. Pretty big fiery region there, north and south of the equator on our sun. And then looking at outgoing, and this is where we saw the M-class solar flare coming from those bright regions, departing the Earth-facing view. Having a look at multi-spectrum, the last 48 hours of events, we did just recently have some pretty fiery action on our sun. We have eight sunspot regions that are producing this activity. And they have been pretty busy the last few days, and I apologize for no updates, but I appreciate your patience and understanding as I'm going through these times. We are going through these times together, so much love and thank you all for your support. Having a look at another light here, 193 angstroms. There hasn't been many coronal holes to deal with on our sun right now. Minor plasma filaments in the northern hemisphere small coronal hole developing in the northern but that's about it we haven't had any earth facing coronal holes there is a look at our eight sunspot regions and another look here at our sunspot regions in action sped up here over time current space weather conditions right now we are under one geo one geomagnetic watch Solar winds are coming in at 527 kilometers per second right now after seeing our KP index up over 5. Solar X-ray flux having a look here, showing that 1M-class flare from two days ago and the 2C-class solar flares from today. Looking at the KP index as it hopped up on the 25th and now into the 27th as well. Having a look at ESPWA space prediction spiral, showing a large coronal mass ejection taking off towards Mercury. Having a look at that little yellow circle, that is a planet Earth, and we are expecting some space weather activity into the 30th. Having a look here at LASCO 2, and we're showing here the last seven days of space weather activity on our sun. Amazing images brought to you by SOHO, and as well mixed here with daily events worldwide. Take a moment to thank you all again. For your love and patience and understanding during these times. But we're back in action. And so is our sun. We've seen multiple large solar events over this past year. And watch for those to increase tenfold. As we get into the heightened solar cycle 25 which is a maximum. Then we're going to be dipping into a long minimum. We'll see. Having a look here at earthquakes for the past 24 hours, roughly USGS is reporting about 190 earthquakes in 24-hour period. Yesterday, Tofino, Canada, reported a 4.1 earthquake. Today, notable 3.4 there. Willow Creek, California, as well as 5.4 here, reported off the coast of Mexico up into the Riviera Plate. Caribbean Sea activity, minor rumbles at that. South American Plate, Chile, Bolivia. Deepest earthquake today, Fiji Islands, 533 kilometer depth, but sizable, 5.2 magnitude. And here's our largest earthquake the past 24 hours. Philippines, 5.9 magnitude earthquake at 90 kilometer depth, as well as 4.8 there, Marianas Trench. And as well, Japan, 4.5, 4.5 here. Pakistan and is notable here at Polkowais, Poland, reporting a 4.5 magnitude earthquake. You don't really report much there. Well, we don't. 
So that's definitely a peculiar place. And as well, looking at the quieted down Alaska. Now, what happened up north there? We're seeing a lot of fires and as well, active volcanoes through the Aleutian Islands. I'm going to show you in just a moment. Quick glance here at the last seven days for shakers across the world. And over the past seven days, we've seen a lot of deep earthquakes, but not large magnitude. So expecting something here to give really soon, especially across the North American plate. It is way too quiet for a seven day period. So heads up, stay tuned, stay aware, prepared with daily events worldwide. Now I wanted to share here with you the sulfur dioxide emission map. This is a three day forecast, putting this into motion. You can see that dark red over the Aleutian Islands in Alaska. Now that may have been all the wildfire smoke sucked up westward with a low, lingering low over northern BC in Alaska, or it was a large eruption somewhere through the Aleutian Islands. That is a massive amount of SO2. Sulfur dioxide emissions, most times coming from volcanoes, but a lot of the SO2 also comes from wildfires, which we've seen multiple outbreaks throughout Canada. Having a quick glance here at the rest of the world, no other major SO2 spots to site. Still seeing a lot of SO2 coming out of the southern hemisphere, which we don't normally see. But this is definitely a peculiar, large SO2 mass coming off of Alaska through the Aleutian Islands. Having a look here at NASA Worldview at the two active tropical storms, you got Felipe and as well 91L Investigation Area Tropical Depression moving through the Central Atlantic. Looking at all this wildfire smoke as well across eastern Canada, Atlantic provinces, even through Manitoba. As we did have those large wildfires breaking out, but we've seen some relief with this large low pressure system off the coast of BC. This has been lingering now since the 24th. 20, yeah, about the 24th is when it started to make landfall, pumping tons of moisture up into Washington, BC, and northward. So hopefully most of that moisture made it all the way up. But we're definitely going to see some changes here across Canada and hoping that that will die down our wildfire season. Having a look across the Pacific Ocean, we do have remnant low 45L and as well, remnant low here going towards Vietnam, 13W. No major tropical storms in the forecast for the Pacific. Having a look here at the national weather forecast, bright to by windy, looking at all this moisture coming in on the west coast, and it's going to head northward and wrapped up with a low pressure system heading across the Hudson Bay. Extreme weather moving up southeastern and northeastern United States, and then a large low developing across the Pacific Northwest in the long range. And as well, long range forecast showing Felipe making landfall. And then look at these systems developing in the long range. Some big lows battling it out in the northern hemisphere. And a couple of these lows are definitely going to funnel down some snow. High pressure ridge over Alaska helping fuel all of this very cool weather. And we will see some snowfall totals through Alberta and British Columbia. From that low through the Hudson Bay, it's going to help bring down all of these cold temperatures. Having a look at snowfall totals across BC and into Alberta, you can see heavy amounts up to 70 centimeters in the foothills of Alberta. And as well, Calgary, most likely we'll see about 30 centimeters northward. You could see 50 centimeters, but this is a 10 day forecast. So long range forecast will be cooling off and bringing some snow. Parts of Canada and as well parts of Finland, and Norway, and all through the Tibetan Plateau. Having a look here at a weather forecast across the rest of the world, Europe and Africa, and Russia, multiple lows coming in through Europe right now, affecting the United Kingdom, Ireland, and then up into Norway, shorelines, lingering low through the Indian Ocean, 
keeping things very wet through Myanmar and parts of eastern India. And then long-range forecast, big low-pressure system in the Atlantic, heading northward towards Greenland. Quick look here at the Pacific Ocean, Southeast Asia, and Australia. Long-range forecast, pretty dry across Australia until about the 30th, 29th or 30th. You'll see some small bands coming in from the south and as well from the north with a huge low south of Tasmania. Much love, everybody. I hope you enjoyed today's update and welcome back to the Daily Do. Please share this video with your friends and family as we would love to hit a goal of 75,000 followers. Share and show you care. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun and get your Daily Do. We'll see you next video. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.